I'm very pleased to welcome the Mr. Yamauchi Yoshimitsu, uh, the Assistant Vice Minister of Justice uh, of Japan, uh, who is attending the SDG 16 conference for the second time. Minister Yamauchi, at the 2019 Rome conference, you invited us to the 14th United Nations Congress on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice hosted by your ministry. And please accept our congratulations on organizing a very successful meeting in March during this challenging time. Are there insights you can share from the Congress's deliberations on the impact of COVID-19 on progress towards SDG 16 and what this means for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals? Floor is yours, sir. Oh, oh, thank you for inviting me to the first round and I'm very happy to participate in this second round of conference on the SDG 16. Um, as you have introduced me, I am uh, Yamauchi. I'm the Assistant Vice Minister of Justice in Japan. Uh, and it's a great honor for me to speak in this panel with so much distinguished speakers on the list. And thank you once again for mentioning the Kyoto Congress. Uh, as you see in the background of me, that's where the conference was held. Uh, Kyoto Congress is the short word for the 14th United Nations Congress on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice, and which was held in Kyoto. Uh, it was originally scheduled to be taking place in April 2020, uh, but was postponed for the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you may wonder what's the relationship of a crime Congress to SDG 16. Well, this conference main theme was, and I quote, advancing crime prevention and cr criminal justice and the rule of law towards the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it brought together government officials, uh, criminal justice practitioners, and other experts uh, to discuss common challenges on crime prevention and criminal justice, including emerging challenges under the COVID-19 pandemics. So under this uh, pandemic, it was organized in a hybrid format, just like today, I think, uh, in in-person participation and the online participation combined. And surprisingly, it drew 5,600 participants from around the world, both online on, and in-person, despite of this pandemic. And uh, I think your original question was about the deliberation at the Kyoto Congress about the impact of COVID-19 on the progress towards uh, SDG 16. Uh, naturally, in this uh, Congress held under the pandemic, many touch upon that issue. Uh, first, I'd like to recall that the Executive Director Wally of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the UNODC, the Secretary of the Congress, actually mentioned that this COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the global situation on poverty, and therefore the society is becoming more vulnerable against corruption, terrorism, and other forms of crime. Uh, in Everybody kind of echoed on this uh, ob observation. And, and, and in addition, many participant countries in their deliberation pointed out that, like for instance, you know, prisons uh, are becoming vulnerable uh, for the pandemic. And there's like, the criminals are exploiting uh, high tech during the pandemic like online criminal activities such as fraud by the criminal organizations are rising. And there's a misuse of uh, online based tools, especially utilized by like terrorists or violent extremists for their recruitment. And naturally domestic violence cases is expanding. There's, you know, there's issues of child online uh, exploitation. So overall, you know, social, social injustice, should I say, is emerging. Uh, going back to the SDG 16, this pandemic related situation is, an, uh, is you know, apparently an, an obstacle for achieving SDG 16. For example, if you look at SDG 16.1, the, uh, the, the eradication of the violence, 16.2, uh, doing away with child abuse, 16.4 touches upon organized crime and 60.8, uh, terrorism. So, you know, we need to cope with these issues uh, in the criminal justice sector 
if we were to achieve SDGs. So in this respect, I would like to draw your attention to the outcome document of the Kyoto Congress, which is Kyoto Declaration. Uh, I hope there are some hints uh, involved, included in the direction where we should be heading. You know, but Kyoto Declaration covers many aspects of crime prevention and criminal justice over like 13 pages and 97 paragraphs. So I wouldn't bore you with all the details, but let me just first point out that since this crime, uh, this declaration is the first of its kind after the adoption of the 2030 agenda. So I'd like to point out that the Kyoto Declaration clearly articulate that there's a strong link between crime prevention, criminal justice, and the rule of law and the sustainable development. And actually Kyoto Declaration calls upon member states that the challenge posed and aggravated by the COVID-19 to, to the crime prevention and criminal justice, we need to strengthen the resilience of the law enforcement people and the other crime uh, and other criminal institutions as well. And including as some, I think uh, Ms. Beagle pointed out, multi-stakeholder partnership. And Kyoto Declaration also, also mentioned, and, and I quote, that we recognize in the light of the ongoing experience of the COVID-19 pandemic and in preparation for any similar future challenges, the need to review criminal justice system and make them more effective, accountable, transparent, inclusive, and responsive through promoting digitalization. He also touches upon, we need to build partnership with the digital industry, the public private sector, and we need to enhance capacity in the IT for law enforcement people. Now, the Congress, Kyoto Congress is, is over. So it's, we are already on the next stage. And the next day is to translate a commitment in the Kyoto Con in declaration that everybody uh, supported into concrete action. And Japan hopes as a host country to do just that because safety and security are preconditions to achieve a peace, justice, and inclusive society that the SDG 16 aims at. Thank you. Back to you.